there's so many facets of this camera. I've got into it, taking great photos with the eye tracking and everything. It's brilliant, but there's so many other functionalities. There's one particular functionality I want to do is auto capture. Um, probably today would be, but I don't think we're going to last long. It's starting to spit now, so I might have to turn this off. And uh, yeah, so uh, we'll, there was a couple of things I was going to do today, but I've been just doing the um, rendering of all the footage I've got later. Now, at the moment, I've got this on, um, it's on photo capture now, but I, flick of a switch, I can turn it to video capture. And I'll preset it to um, 4K. Yes, um, when I did the footage the other day, it was at 8K, brilliant. But it was at um, 30 frames a second, where now I've got on 4K at 120 frames a second. So I'll be able to capture the mo motion, yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, this is a Z9, which is a hybrid camera, video and thing. The D8, I specifically mainly use, although I'm using for video at the moment because to do this uh, presentation, but um, yeah, I have to stop. It's starting to get a bit heavier, I think. Uh, yeah, it's coming, probably get a bit out of it. I'll just throw stuff in. This is a, um, a camera I use a lot. It's a bridge camera. I specifically use this for video. It does do photos, but the quality is nothing compared to the Z9 or any of those cameras. But it's a handy, handy camera for um, for doing my video productions on wild deer, which I'm hopefully in the next few days to take the Z9 up. I'm quietly confident now that I can use it without having to worry about things, get it preset before I go, um, so I don't miss any of the um, uh, that critical footage that I that I need. Um, you can see the birds are taking off now because the, the storm's coming in. Sun's shining though, that's that's a beauty. So this is some of the gear I take when I backpack, as I said. Um, camera, bridge, uh, the, well I'll be taking the Z9 with the 500, the bridge camera, then I'll carry other stuff. The, Essential thing, me uh, like a Juravids, 10 to 15 powered uh, binoculars, which I, you know, I'll, I'll feel naked if I don't have them. Um, and as I said, I've had them for a long time, so you can hear the birds going crazy. Just having a look to see. Lots of yellow faces, which I filmed the other day, which was great. Um, it's not a real great day because it's so windy, but he could rock up. Well, how you find the Zura? So you'll see a splash on the water because he's doing a bit of fishing, but um, maybe later. As I said, uh, doesn't look real crash hot. I missed a, a raptor over here. Um, I think it was a white-shouldered kite, just a, just just over the side of here. But I was too busy looking around for snakes prior. Oh, see, I've left that on. But see, that's another thing. You leave it on, and it, it goes into a standby. And if you don't touch it for a while, it goes into standby. Standby. No, with their bigger battery, it's it's brilliant. What have we got here? A little little wren, little superb fairy wren, female. Um, yeah, so I might have to hightail it out, and it doesn't look real promising at the moment. Um, hopefully you'll get a bit of rain. Well, as I said, we've had uh, a good month with no rain and just like weather. I'm filming on the DA50 now and that's about good as it gets. Oh, what's, I just see some... Oh, what have we got over here? Oh, no. Another yellow face honey eater. Just 
just got to keep an eye on. There's another spot there, the uh, Zura goes, but as I said, it's ending yesterday, but not today. Got to be careful moving around here because there's so many snakes around this particular area. I said, I'm doing a good one there. Yeah, you know, we've got a comes the sun. As I say, the auto tracking works really well when there's good light. But when when there's low light, it doesn't matter what camera you've got, it'll hunt in, in low light conditions. So you expect it to be the same as it is in a good light conditions. No, it's not. That's a fact. Because it's looking looking for those spots where it, where it can um, get the sun. There's a little a grey fantail over here. Um, We'll see what happens. We'll... Yeah, about 10 to 12 feet. Will fo closest focus on this now. As I said, it's a five, 500 mil uh, focal length, but the closest focus is around about 10 feet. Maybe a little bit more, but I'm not going to measure it. You can hear the birds going now. They're um, silver eyes. Um, that'd be good if I can get a few of them here. Yeah, they are. They're flying over the top. A group of them. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a cold day after what we've had. That's um, as I said, the last few weeks we've had a real hot spell for March. And um, as I say, where I am now is where the water was. That's how much evaporation we've had in the swamp. And um, we'll see what happens. It could rain still. I had to stop before when I was doing um, this a presentation on equipment I use for when I go up the bush, uh, filming deer and that. But um, yeah, it stopped a bit, which is good. As I said, um, as I said before, I've had the DA50 for about six years now, and. Uh, at the time, a bit like the Z9, it's, uh, it's probably the ultimate in photography equipment now is being mirrorless, 20 frames per second at uh, lossless, uncompressed raw. Um, and then you can go to JPEGs, the finer ones, which aren't too bad. I mean, they're, they're, they're you know, like, you wouldn't want to do a big blow up of them or anything like that, like crop the hell out of it and expect it to have a good resolution in it. But um, yeah, just good photos. So here the other week I had them landing on the tree in front of me, but not one bird's come in at all. The other thing, what the honey eaters come in here, they feed little off insects off the water. I'm just, just checking to see if that is there is it's fairly hard to spot in this like in these willows. <laughs> 